I've been wearing down shoe leather all day, trying to get a lead on a guy in Putney. Night was falling quickly. Too quickly. I guess it was time to head back to the office. In my line of work, you have to take any joint you can find. Geez, the place was a mess. Gardening was my first love, and it was at the gardening store I met Dollface. I had stuff in that shed going back to Prohibition. I sure fell for that dame. I also fell for these yellow sulfur, green sulfur. She said they had different uses, but the only difference I could find was green dye. That wasn't the only time that broad double-crossed me. She said a big shot like me needed a big shooter. And like a mug, I bought two. One's for flowers and one's for tomatoes, but they're the same poison at the same strength. Yeah, why use two guns when one will do? She sold me more rot-gut booze than I'll ever want. The cops say, you only need five bottles to keep the garden rosy. This time it's curtains for Dollface. She sold her last bottle. Once we'd been close. But what the hell? This was Putney. Whether we're presenting a fictional scenario or an actual case history will be revealed later in the program. But with malaria still the biggest killer disease in the world today, the implications of this scenario are clear. Once symptoms start, there's very little time before the disease takes hold. Our barman hasn't even been abroad, and so the GP must be alert to the early signs, even though his history would disguise the possibility of malaria. Towards Independent Travel is a partnership between Gateshead Council and Nexus Passenger Transport Authority to develop the confidence of people with learning disabilities to travel safely on local transport. The project has a range of strands including a buddy service which provides support by volunteer buddies until clients can cope alone. Got a bus pass to get a bus by myself. It's more happier. There are now 18 independent graduate travellers from the buddy scheme with another 23 currently in training. At the moment I'm working with a chap who's visiting his sister. It's going to give him a lot of independence instead of relying on the care home to take him in a car. He can go on his own on the bus, visit his sister and come back whenever he chooses. He's doing very well. I like this classroom because we get to do good things 
and we never get told off. I really like this lesson because it's all practical. The famous teacher is like, because mainly Miss Bed up, because she like brought us up in this school so. At Northwick Coach School transition, we've had three classrooms ready made, ready prepared for our year six students to come into. Within each classroom, there are 15 students and they have English, maths, humanities and science and also their French lessons with one teacher. Research has shown that those students that have one good teacher do much better than those that go to specialist teachers. We found that those students that are in the transition rooms haven't dipped academically. I spy with my little eyes something beginning with R. Army. For God's sake, Army starts with an A. He's looking for something that starts with an R. Motorbike. <laughs> I bet you all laughed at that, didn't you? But it's not much fun if you really have problems with reading and spelling. I couldn't even read my right because it was all backwards, even though I thought that was how to read, right, because no one taught me how to write exactly properly. I just made it up myself. At least one child in every 25 is dyslexic. That means that no matter how clever or intelligent they are, they're still going to have great problems learning to read, write and spell. Even telling the time or remembering the days of the week in order can be difficult. And these problems mean that the child can miss out on other things too, and not just in the classroom. I was diagnosed dyslexic at the age of 18 after taking my GCSEs and A-levels. And all through my GCSEs and A-levels, I had to stay in and work really hard while my friends were out having a good time. Sometimes we can hurt a dyslexic child without meaning to. dyslexic, but it doesn't mean they're any less intelligent. Ben, Ben, it's you. What a prize. Go on, off you go. Well done, Ben. There's your book token. A book token for a child who has problems with reading. And these problems don't disappear when you leave the classroom. We try approaching a couple of More and more we depend on the written word in everyday life. In fact, I find it hard to imagine life without it, as my livelihood depends on it. Most of my work uh, involves uh, photographing events and taking information. And um, I have problems in remembering where I've been, uh, the dates of when I've been someplace, people's names, all that type of information which is relevant to the work I do. So uh, now what I'm doing is just getting somebody else to write out that information. But this doesn't have to happen. Most dyslexic children can learn to read, write and spell properly if the problem's identified early enough and they get the right kind of teaching. Many parents and teachers don't know why children fail to learn the basic skills of reading and writing, which the rest of us take for granted. They frequently turn to the British Dyslexia Association for help. The British Dyslexia Association and its national network of local groups receives about 20,000 inquiries a year from parents, individuals, teachers and other professionals. The association responds to each one individually and offers free advice and information. For many of them it's the first time they've ever discussed their difficulties and often they wait for weeks or even months before they can pluck up the courage to get in contact. It's not easy to admit that you can't read, write or spell and that you don't know where to turn to for help. And it's an intense relief when finally you can talk to someone who understands. <laughs> 